Hi there, and welcome to chapter one, Childhood and Delinquency, here for Juvenile Justice, CJ 106. So the risks and rewards of adolescence. We know that there's more than 75 million children in the United States that are under age 17, and many of them have multiple problems. The problems of American society have had significant effect on our youth. I want to you to take a moment to just think about what's going on in our society right now with COVID and um, online, strictly online learning. Um, it has really affected our youth and we're, we're having to remember that as we move through. So adolescence is a time of trial and uncertainty a time when um, youths have anxiety, humiliation, uh, significant mood swings. And during this time, we know that the personality is still developing. Um, and so the, the um, great rapid biological development that's happening, happening in our youth has a huge piece on everything else that's going on in society. So 200 years ago, girls matured sexually at age 16. Today, they typically mature at about 12 and a half years old. 16, 12 and a half. Big difference as far as what's going on here in the brain. So in later adolescence, that's going to be 16 to 18, youths may experience crisis that um, a psychologist Eric Erickson described as a struggle between ego identity and role diffusion. Now, <clears throat> ego identity is formed when youths develop this firm sense of who they are and what they stand for. And role diffusion occurs when youths experience uncertainty and really place themselves at the mercy of leaders who promise to give them a sense of identity that they can't mold for themselves. I wanna say that again. Uncertainty and youth placing themselves at the mercy of leaders who promise to give them a sense of identity. Now, when we say leaders, that can be peers, um, peers that are leaders in their groups. So keep that in mind. But each year about 11,000 teens lose their lives from illness, but also from unexpected and preventable um, events, motor vehicle accidents, homicide, suicide, Youths that are considered at risk to these damaging social and emotional and physical outcomes are those who usually engage in dangerous conduct. So drug abuse, alcohol use, promiscuous sexuality. Um, so at least 10 million American teens fall into a category of at-risk youth. We're going to hear that expression a lot this quarter, at-risk youth, and you'll learn more about what that is. So typically the most pressing problem facing the youth include seven items, and we're going to go through those. But let's start here with child poverty. So today, poverty is more prevalent than it was in the 60s and the 70s. Between 14 and 16 million children in America are considered poor. And of those seven, seven million children live, excuse me, of those, the seven million of them live in extreme poverty. So when we talk about extreme poverty, we're talking live, about living on less than $11,800 for a family of four per year. There are families that bring home $11,800 per month. Can you imagine living on that uh, per year? And some of you might very well be able to imagine that because you've lived that. So health problems um, is a huge thing because receiving adequate health care 
or not receiving adequate, adequate health care is, is significant concern for children. Only one in three children is physically active every day. And while most kids now have health care coverage of some sort, so in our state, Apple Health, um, about 10% or 7.5 million youth do not. So how do you get Apple Health, the Medicaid or the state insurance? Well, you have a parent or a guardian uh, that applies for it and does the paperwork and submits everything that needs to be submitted. But what about those kids that have parents that are hooked on drugs, don't really give a crap or a concern about their kids? Um, so that's going to be where that smaller percentage is. Um, so hopefully we have uh, means to get those kids what they need. So parental separation and divorce, uh, it's estimated that 40 to 50% of first marriages in the U.S. end in divorce. Second mar marriage failure is 60 to 67%. And third marriages fail at a rate of 73 to 74%. So it definitely happens to kids. Okay, of course, our foster care system, among the 3 million children, which is 4% of all U.S. children that are not living with either parent, 54% live with their grandparents, 21% live with other relatives, and 24% live with non-relatives. There's still about 400,000 kids in foster care and many of them entered foster care before the age of six. So inadequate education, 60% of fourth and eighth graders in public schools cannot read at grade level. 78% of public school students graduated from high school in four years, only 78%. One in three black students and three in 10 Hispanic and Native American Alaska Native students did not graduate from high school in the past four years. Um, more than one in six black students received at least one out of school suspension compared to one in 50 Asian Pacific Islander students and one in 20 white students. So it, it's really important to understand these are statistics and statistics change, but statistics is what drives uh, sociological change, changes to a system to um, hopefully change things for the better. So that's why we tell you this in this first chapter. And these, of course, are all in your textbook. Adults 25 years of age and older with less than a high school diploma are likely to earn 30% less than those who have earned their high school diploma. So it's important. Education is really important. Okay, so child abuse and neglect, up to 700,000 children are legally abused each year. Child abuse is defined as any act or failure of an act by a parent or caregiver who is responsible for the child's welfare that results in some sort of imminent risk or serious harm to the child's health and welfare due to physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Long definition encompasses a lot of things, but important to remember. So social media and the internet, obviously a newer concept. I mean, not, I'd say new-ish, um, certainly uh, a big part of life for the youth in our society, well, for everyone in our society. But we're talking about cyberbullying and the willful and repeated harm inflicted through the medium of text. And that can include Snapchat, Instagram, whatever uh, source that you're using. But we know the bullying is this process of sending insulting emails or uh, DMs or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, bullying, just bullying like you would when you were face to face. So oftentimes we, ha we forget that um, at some point in history with bullying, 
maybe you went to school and you might have experienced some bullying, but when you left school and you went home, you didn't experience that bullying from your peers, you know, not to mention what might be going on with your family, but you know, you were able to step away from it. But with cyber uh, bullying and the internet and social media, it just continues, continues, continues. Um, so it's very, it's a very sad reality. So cyber stalking, you guys know what this is, you know, it's just, we have all been in a situation where we've wanted to look somebody up or uh, look, you know, look up and find out more about them. But really, it can go to the next level of, of craziness. <laughs> and that is stalking someone by internet cyber stalking. Um, and sexting, of course, that's sending explicit photos, I always say, you know, be aware that um, when you are a minor and you are disseminating pictures that are sexually explicit, that is child pornography by the legal standpoint. You send that to your friends, somebody sends you a picture and you decide to send that on, guess what? You have just distributed pornography and that's a federal offense. So you guys need to keep that in mind. That's something that I really hand on with my college students. Be aware of that. So we're going to talk a little bit about this idea of juvenile delinquency. Actually, we're going to talk about it for the whole quarter. Um, so I want you guys to understand that juvenile delinquency is uh, the participation in illegal behavior by a minor who falls under a statutory age limit. So the problems that youth are experiencing, these ones we just went through, poverty, health care, inadequate education, um, those have long been associated with juvenile delinquency. Um, the study of juvenile delinquency is really important because of the damage suffered by the victims and the problems that are faced by its perpetrators. Juvenile delinquency is the participation in illegal behavior by a minor. Okay, so I know I just said that, but I want you guys to understand that that's the definition that we're looking at. About 1.7 million youths under age 18 are arrested each year for crimes ranging from loitering or trespassing to murder. More than 800,000 youths belong to street gangs. And chronic juvenile offenders or chronic delinquent offenders are considered really a serious social problem. The study of delinquency involves analyzing the juvenile justice system, all the way from law enforcement to courts, to the correctional agencies that are designed and put into place to treat these youthful offenders. So we're going to stop right now here with this lecture and we will come back and add on to this chapter.